you've got the great, big, beautiful Victorian house. I love it. It is. It's, it's wide hallways, yeah. tall ceilings, yeah. and the grand staircase, it's right? The, yes. Big newel post. It's the first thing you see when you walk in. Exactly. The house was built in 1894. 1894, wow. Big doorways. Yes, got ceilings. A, yeah, the, all the Victorian trim you could want, right? And look what we've got here. A fireplace. It's a, a beautiful old fireplace. I've never seen one like this before. Right. But as you can see, there's some issues with it. And I'm so glad you're able to take a look at it for us. All right, well, our pleasure right off the bat because I don't know if you know it, but this is a gem. You don't walk into you know many houses where you actually have a fireplace with this much detail. For instance, Bob, look at this. This is what we call a chevron brick. I don't want to say it's one of a kind, but I haven't seen one yet, only in books. Going up, this is what we call an egg and dart detail. You can see how beautiful that is. But look above at the woodwork. See how they tried to tie it all together? Unfortunately, I can also see the settlement pattern. Uh, this brick is tipping to the left, so I know that there's a problem somewhere in this area. It's a risky job, Bob. Most of the material that we're gonna be working with is one of a kind, so irreplaceable, if you will. The main risk that we're gonna be dealing with today is when I extract this brick very carefully now, that I'm gonna hope that none of these brick are broken or I don't break them during the extraction. If I do, huge problem because we can't reproduce the brick and the face of this fireplace will change forever. Well, I'm willing to take the risk. It's a beautiful fireplace. I'd love to see it restored. Okay, glad to hear it because I'm up for the task. The only thing I do wanna do is get to the basement and make sure we don't have any real structural damage that'll affect what we do. Okay, let's take a look. All right, Bob. So the hearth is right here. Oh yeah, okay, all right. The old barrel arch, which I love, very strong. I can see that this one's been patched, which is fine. Um, and look at this post. I wonder if this is built for support or anything. Although I do see some evidence uh, of other posts. So maybe this was a coal room or something Could back in the day. Room. Yes. Yep, but the foundation, now this is one of the old stone foundations and under this stucco coat is individual stones that they probably took right out of this hole and stacked up as the foundation. So I see a lot of cracking here which may indicate that some of these stones on the corner walked away which would be responsible for the settling. But uh, everything in a general sense looks pretty good to me so I bet you when we fix this fireplace you're not going to have any more problem with the uh, settlement. That's so. good news. So but always good to check it out. Yes. I'm glad we came yeah. down. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this masonite, which is just bendy, compressed wood material. So when I'm working on these top brick, the arch doesn't fall. And these two by fours are actually going to help me condense the shape of the mason ups, masonite so it's tight against the brick. One side. Yeah, that's gonna work great. In terms of my tools, I'm gonna go a little unconventional. These are just margin trowels and flat joiners, but they're the only thing that's thin enough for me to actually get in and extract the mortar. So what would be a conventional tool? Conventional tool is a chisel, but as you know, the chisel gets a wide head and that'll chip the brick, which is the opposite of what we're trying to do. So now I'm just gonna tap this brick up and hopefully I break that bond right there and I'm able to slip the brick out. That's yep, fast. That went pretty well. Now I'll just take a little mortar from the bottom. Look at that. Perfect. Wow. See all that, Bob? That is handwork. Wow. <laughs> Just a mason and his chisel. No saws, no diamond yeah. blades. Look at the modifications he had to make. Amazing. Look at that's just the back of his hammer. So he's gnawing at this, knowing that he can hit the face. Very talented guy who laid this, so good sign. But look at all this. Is that the old mortar that's in there? This is the old mortar, and it's in the condition that we were hoping. It's crumbled, it's loose. So when this settled, it must have crumbled, which again is gonna make for a very easy extraction, which is what we were hoping for, yeah. This went so well that I think I'm just gonna be able to tap, 
break the bond, yep. scrape and scratch. And there it is. Looked like the bottom one came loose as well. Yeah, which is, again, what we were hoping for. That is great. This brick here, even with my hand, just a little tap. And we're definitely going to want to save this brick. But look at that, more of the same characteristics of the brick hammer. The same colored mortar. And look, look at the thinness of the. So, Bob, you see how thin that is, right? Imagine with a hammer, tap, 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 tap. And just through experience, I lose that piece three out of four times. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, really a hard cut. Now we can go after the remaining brick, but only in the areas that were damaged by settling. I want to keep as much of the fireplace intact as possible. And no imperfections, which means the guy that hammered this piece together really knew what he was doing. So Bob, one of the big problems that we have when we're trying to restore a fireplace like this is the joints. Can you see how thin that is? Yes. Normal joints for us are about 3 eighths of an inch. You can see that's a lot less. So what we do do is we end up using the same material, okay? This is type N mortar. All it is is Portland cement and lime mixed together. That's what gives us, gives us our type N. And this is the sand that we would usually use with the type N. As you can see, that aggregate is pretty big. That's just gonna be way too big for it to fit down and keep those joints as tight as we have them. So what we're gonna use is what we call a restoration sand. Now look at that. See how it's very fine? very fine? That's gonna allow us to get all our mortar in between the brick. So all we have to do now is get started with the mix. The proportions are one scoop of mortar to three scoops of sand. Because the original mortar was red, we're gonna add a red dye to the mix as well. I'm looking for is just that one consistent color of red. Don't forget we're going to do every single joint on the fireplace, so consistency is key. You can see I'm using my tool to even press down. That way I'm just going to make sure that the brick is full from front to back. we're gonna grind out all the joints. That way we'll have color uniformity. This is incredible, look at the job. It, I didn't think you could bring it back to this extent. It's almost perfect. All right, well thanks Bob. As you know, we did get lucky. We thought those chevron brick may have been tied into the other existing masonry. Turned out that it wasn't. We got lucky. I, I love the way the results came out, so. Well, I, I think it's an awful lot more than luck, Mark. Oh, the well. skill that you brought to this <laughs> and the way you brought it back to life, I'm, I'm impressed. Well, thanks for having me in, Bob. You're very welcome. All right. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.